Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Welcome to We Choose to Thrive. So pleased to have you. Would you please introduce yourself and give us just a smidge of a background of where you were and where you are today? Well, that's hard to get in a smidge, but yes, absolutely. I'm thrilled to be a part of this because I think it's so in line with my message of all these years of that we have to share a story, not just to help other people heal, but the first step is to get that story out of our physical bodies and actually be able to see it external from us and then understand it better and then choose what to do with it. And I, like you, choose to share it with a wider audience so they can use the story to best suit their healing. So my, most people call me Cheryl Ann Webster. Others call me the boob lady, especially my younger audience. But I think that's because I'm best known for the Beautiful Women Project. Being an artist first and a speaker and facilitator second, using my art as a backdrop, almost like you're writing a book, but instead of picking up the book, you're going to see my art on screen or on stage or in an exhibit and start to explore who and what is shaping your life. And that's been my mission all the way along is to visually represent some of the things that impact us and sadly hold us back, but also things that help us celebrate who we are a little bit more as well. That's beautiful. So what got you started down this path? I think it was because as a little girl, I was silenced and I was living in a house that wasn't safe. I experienced abuse of various kinds. And of course, as with many children, we don't know that that's not the norm. I was actually a vocal child and tried to tell people, not necessarily report what was happening, but talk about what was happening as if it's normal. And obviously that was silenced pretty fast. But I had a lot to say, and of course, I had a lot of emotions to express, but I wasn't a naughty child, so I didn't lash out in the way that may have got me better attention. Instead, I started just to doodle with pen and paper. We didn't really have art supplies at home, but there was always scraps of paper and pens and pencils around, and of course, at school, it's a sort of mecca for stationery. So I didn't exactly write essays, but I did do a lot of self-expression on that lined paper. And so that was the beginning of it all. And what I discovered is people didn't necessarily know what I was trying to say. They didn't see it as a bonus. I got told off a lot for doodling on everything, but I felt better. And even though I may have scribbled all day and drawn something and you might not know what I'm saying to you, I've said it. Mm -hmm. So I was no longer silenced. It became my voice for expressing my inner thoughts, feelings, and fears. And so that was where it started. I was not a good artist. I wasn't doing well at art school. In fact, I failed out at high school because I wasn't following a curriculum. So when they wanted me to paint a bouquet of flowers and I'm scribbling scenes that uh, were really expressing pain and hurt, they didn't understand it, didn't right. really care. I think today maybe I could have been lucky and had a teacher that went, hmm, maybe we should bring her in and talk to her. But back then there wasn't. The awareness wasn't, wasn't there. The awareness wasn't there at that point as far as even what to do and what to look for. Well, and the funny thing is, my abuse didn't cause external bruising, but apparently I was often bruised as a child. So they did call me into the office for that and asked if anybody hit me. And I quite honestly said, no, I was just, I'm a princess. I bruise so easily. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was interesting to reflect back and go, ha, huh, how come they only asked about the bruising and only asked about hitting? Because somehow that told me hitting's bad and so people shouldn't hit you. But if they'd have said, is anybody touching you? Is this happening? Are you being treated well at home? Maybe I'd have said, well, no. <laughs> but that kind of awareness wasn't there. And being raised in England, it was extremely shunned. I mean, it just, 
you didn't talk about it with friends, family, or anybody. No, you don't. I know for many of us that, you know, for myself, I'm 60 years old and I'm just now speaking up. And it's because of our backgrounds and our situations and we, we don't understand, at least for, for many years, I didn't even know there was this kind of support that's available to us, you know. So, and I didn't know until I came to Canada. Yeah, it's amazing, and it? Isn't was it? only then, you know, I'm suddenly in this wonderful, stable, loving relationship. <laughs> and instead of being, woohoo, life is great, I crash like a lead balloon. Mm -hmm. And it was only then did I realize that something's going on. Now, for a while it took me, it was very confusing to feel safe and comfortable and happy and then break down. But it's because I finally could. And I You felt safe enough to do that. You felt yeah. safe. Yeah. And it was interesting because I didn't stop creating the art then. In fact, I accelerated it. And so my husband and I built a studio for me. And I think... Um, Friends and family expected me to make beautiful pottery vases and mugs <laughs> and plates. And there's me making sculptures of people and titles called Trapped and Healing and it, these kinds of things. And at first it was a bit of a shock. But uh, of course, as you know, it's excelled since then, really being my visual voice and speaking for others who were silenced. Very, very cool. So... It in your healing journey and the place that you are now, which is just phenomenal to see what you're doing and how you're giving back to our world, what would you say to somebody that experienced life like as you and I have, that realized that it's time to come out of that? What would you say to them and what would you encourage them to do? I would strongly say sharing is one option. However, it's not always the best option for everybody. And about sharing it outside of yourself, keeping it in you is what I felt caused the most damage. So there's ways to take it from inside and bring it out without telling the world, without telling even your closest companion, if you don't feel ready and you don't feel that's a safe option all around. Because it does take a long time to understand why we're sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started to share, I just sort of spit it at people. <laughs> and really leave it with them and not know what they were supposed to do to it. I would feel better, but they would be stuck with it and not knowing what way to go. So it took me a while to learn how do I share. But I would say anybody at any point in your healing journey, whether you're just beginning at 60 or whether you've been telling people for years, it doesn't really matter, but always explore inwards. What of the effects of what happened to you are still sitting there and I don't believe they necessarily fade completely ever but whatever is there how is it impacting and shaping your life either in a good way because it's made you stronger and vocal like I am or in a bad way that it's holding you back from other things like a, a passionate relationship or whatever it may be for you we're feeling so, happy feeling yeah. happy yeah feeling happy or not really knowing why you're feeling the way you are and something doesn't feel right. right. So for me, I described it as a void. So taking that void and looking at it. And there are many ways you can do that. But find a safe and secure way that works for you. So test the waters. Try whether it's writing a journal, whether it's speaking to a professional, whether it's taking a dance class, whether it's sitting in a silent retreat because you've been so vocal about other things and and various for other reasons to hide things like explore for you and start small take a piece out look at it understand your own comfort zone with it and put it back if you need to if you're not ready to release it break it up take it apart and of course because of my background i always recommend people try it through the arts and that doesn't mean you have to be able to paint or draw i can't draw a stick figure I, I can't draw a stick figure either. It's not important. What it is, is there are so many emotions and experiences that we don't have words for. That's right. And for so many of us, the journey of uh, this started when we were quite a bit younger. And so the words we would apply to our experience today are not the words or feelings and experiences we had back then. So how do you have a vocabulary that says, this is what happened, this is how I feel now? So when we don't have that broad vocabulary to express it, we do have 
an unlimited number of colors, textures, and shapes and materials in our world. Whether it's gathering together scrap paper, whether it's putting paint on a canvas, whether it's taking a bottle and safely breaking it and putting the shards back together with glue. There are so many ways. And just in the act of moving your hands and allowing your heart and soul to express, you will find that there is a vocabulary for every emotion and experience you felt, continue to feel, and will continue to experience mm -hmm. as they morph into something else. That's beautiful. I so appreciate the way you've expressed this. As you say, there is no one way to heal. There will always be trigger points in our lives, the things that come up that kind of bring those memories forward, irregardless of the amount of things that we've done to try and rise above it. And so yeah. when we understand, well, we have art, we have poetry, we have song, we have dance, we have writing, we have all these different ways that we can kind of get that expression out of us so that we're not staying in self-destructive tendencies like depressions and all the things that abuse survivors experience. Um, and I think in some cases too, uh, depending on how you've responded to what's happened, I know of a couple of clients of mine that are, uh, are very outgoing and there's no silent moment, whereas I was silent. So from my silence, I've become a professional speaker and advocate. For others who may have acted out, may have just filled the air with themselves to sort of work as a barrier and a healing mechanism and coping mechanism, then it may mean that you take a silent retreat somewhere you feel safe. It may be that bringing back into quiet to discover what else is there to uncover. There's such a spectrum, primarily though, feeling safe, whether you're exploring on your own or with a professional or with a loved one, feeling safe. And your body will tell you that. Your mind may, mind may say, okay, well, I found this professional and so-and-so recommended them, so they must be good. You don't feel right in there. And I don't mean safe in the way of, is this an abuser? No, no, no. I just mean safe in a way as, am I ready to explore this essence Am I ready to explore it in this way with this person at this particular time? And if your body says mm -mm, to any of that, step away and try something else. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah, very good. You are such an inspiration. I so appreciate it. Could you share which, what, what your website is and how anybody would get a hold of you? Oh, of course. It's cherylannwebster.com. So that's C H E R Y L. A N N W E B S T E R dot com. How I can be of assistance if you feel that I may be somebody who can help you is that there's a variety of things I do. Obviously, my artwork is a visual cue. So there's triggers that are good and triggers that are not good. And sometimes those triggers change. My artwork acts as a trigger for both. Do you need to be spurred on to look at this? is this going to be a comfort to you? So bear in mind that when you go to the website, you will see nudity of clay sculptures, but they're all family friendly. And from there, you can obviously bring me in as a facilitator to your group of professionals or clients. And I also do creative coaching online or in person with people to help them start to visually express their journey in a safe environment. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for choosing to be a part of our We Choose to Thrive series. Well, thank you for doing this. You are one brave lady, and I'm just going to end on that one because I know there's not enough times where we turn this back on you. You are a phenomenal woman, and you're filling your time and your heart by interviewing all us and bringing these stories together. And I wish to give you some time for you to honor the fact that not only did you start to share your story at time you were ready and the time that was perfectly right for you, but you have taken that to a whole new world of using your story as a cornerstone for us to speak up, to speak out. And I know in doing this already, even if you stop today, you have changed people's minds their opinions and their understanding of what abuse is and how it can impact somebody on a lifetime basis. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. I help me try. You know, every woman I speak to, I learn a little bit more about myself. 
that has been amazing. And I am so blessed and really cherish the interviews that I've had because of what a beautiful spirit that is out there. And I know that it, if it can help one person, we want it to help many, but each of our stories, if it can make one impression on somebody's heart to take the steps they need to heal, that's what we want. So. And you have already done that. So <laughs> be gentle on yourself. Always see the ray of sunshine because you're going to hear a lot of hardship, but it's about the thrive. And you've made that very clear to all of us. And we are both examples of there is life after this and you can truly thrive. So thanks to you. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www thewomanilove.com If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, Growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world? We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www. .thewomanilove.com Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.